Hey everybody, I'm Anna Huffmaker with Huffmaker Violins and we're continuing on with our Students Stuck at Home series. So across the country, kids are going back to school digitally. But what does that mean for the beginners? What does that mean when you're going to start playing the violin, the viola, the cello, or the bass, but you can't go to school and your teacher can't tell you what to do? In some cases, you actually may not even be able to go to the violin shop in your town. Maybe you rent your instrument from them online and maybe you deliver, have it delivered or shipped to you. So this video is going to show you what to do if it just walks through your front door and you want to start playing. Um, and this one is all about the cello. We already did one for violin and viola and we'll do another one for the bass. But if you're lucky enough to start playing the cello this fall and you need some help at home, I want you to start with this number one video. So. Let's pretend either the delivery guy just knocked the door and handed this to you or it was in a box and you unpacked it. So the first thing to know is there's probably going to be three or four things in this case. So your cello is going to come in a soft case, maybe canvas, and it's going to have a bow in it. With cello playing, rule number one, take the bow out first, put the bow back in last when you're packing it up. So we're going to slide the bow out. And I'm gonna come back to the bow in just a second and tell you what to do with it. You're gonna always, when you're handling this, I want you to be very careful, always make sure you have one hand on it because it can be a little unstable. If you haven't called your parents in the room to enjoy all this, you should because y'all should be celebrating. This is the beginning of your musical education. And I want you to find the zipper. Normally it will be at the bottom. These cases can all be a little bit different, but, and you're just gonna unzip all the way up the side. In some situations, you might have a second zipper on the other side. And the entire thing, I'm gonna hold on. This is the neck, I'm gonna always hold on to the neck. The entire thing should basically slide right off like an overcoat. I've already taken the bow out, and so I can lay this on the floor somewhere. You also wanna make sure there's nothing left in the pockets because you might need that to start playing, but I've already taken everything out of the pockets for this demonstration. So, I'm gonna lay that down there, somewhere where people won't trip over it. And now I have my cello. If you notice, it's a little short, so you're gonna to wanna to pull the end pin out first. The end pin is here at the bottom. And we will do another video on how to set up your complete posture when you're playing. But for right now, I want you to take it out, maybe thumb to little finger, spread your hand out as wide as you can, maybe a little bit longer not rocket science right now. We just wanna set you up so you can try it, make some noise. You're gonna tighten the screw. So now, ah, see, this fits a little bit better. Now, just so, cause there are teachers watching this, just so you know, this is a half size cello. This isn't the size I would normally play. So if it looks a little weird, a little small, that's because it is. The first thing normally you would do once it's out of its case is you wanna make sure it's in tune. Now this gets a little tricky because tuning your instrument, I won't lie to you, it's hard. Um, you can break strings, it's a little difficult. I am lucky this one's in tune. The chances of yours being in tune, especially if it gets shipped to you, they're pretty slim. So I have a video in the Student Stuck at Home series, it's the Huffmaker Violins YouTube channel, go check it out on how to tune your cello, get your parents to help you. Um, but even better yet, if you can get out, if you're not sheltered in place, go to your local violin shop. Shops will tune your instrument for free all over this country. They'll be glad to help you out. And it's better to have a professional do it if you can. I know some teachers are even organizing drive-by tunings. <laughs> so if, however you can get this cello in tune though, you wanna do that. Now when you first start playing, you're gonna play with your finger, it's called pizzicato, but you're gonna wanna mess around with the bow, let's all be honest. So you notice we took this out of its case. And you'll learn all this from your teacher, but I'm going to tell you anyway, don't touch the hair of the bow. It messes it up if we touch the hair. It is horse hair. Um, and if it's brand new horse hair, depending on where your instrument came from, it may not make any noise at all. And you're going to think, ah, I got a broken cello. No, it's just because it needs rosin. So your instrument should always come with rosin. It should be in your case. This is what rosin looks like for most students. 
and um, it's basically a tree sap. <laughs> so, and in a situation where your hair is brand new, where if you're not making any sound at all, you're gonna need a lot of rosin. Now, normally, you will not put on as much rosin as I am doing right now. Normally, you would just put on three or four swipes and get on with life every day. But in this case, it is brand new horse hair. You're gonna put extra on the bottom, extra on the top, and nice long strokes in between. And when you've done it for a while, ah, see, we're starting to get a little sound. And you'll do it a little bit more and a little bit more until you can get a sound. You really want to try not to put too much rosin on there. If you see white smoke stack things coming off your bow, you put a little bit too much on. Once you've got it rosined, then you're ready to make some music with your bow. But there's a few other things that you need to start playing that I want you to get ready and have around you. I want you to have a cloth. A lot of times you will have gotten this. Maybe you bought it with your rental. If you didn't, something you have at home will work. An old bandana, an old wash rag. Make sure it's clean. Make sure it doesn't have any kind of polish or anything on it. Every day when you're done, I want you to wipe off the rosin, wipe off the fingerprints. If you do that every day, this instrument will literally look like this for hundreds of years, as long as you wipe it off every single day. So you need your cloth. Cellos, you definitely need a rock stop. Now, if you notice, this end pin has a black rubber protector on the bottom. Yours might have one, it might not. That is literally actually to protect the rest of the world from the end pin. It's to protect your parents' hardwood floors, it's to protect you when you walk by if you accidentally hit it, because underneath this, it's actually pretty sharp. It's not meant to support the cello while you're playing. You need something on the floor to do that. Now, the truth is, if you're on carpet and you have one of those, you're, you'll be fine for a little while. But if you're on any kind of stage, if you're on a wooden floor, if you're on tile, anything like that, you need a rock stop. I have a cool sunshiny yellow one right here. So, and all they are, it's a little, usually a metal or a wooden cup, and it goes on the floor, and you just stick your end pin into it, and it keeps it from sliding. <laughs> this rock stop's still in the package, so it's gonna slide a little bit, but you understand how that works. So when you go to get your instrument and they say, what else do you need? Make sure you get a rock stop. Now, the last thing I want to show you before you can set up to make gorgeous music is a music stand. You definitely must have a music stand. It's really important for your posture. You've got to have correct posture when you play. And for 99.9% .9 of you, when you order your music stand, it will come in a box. It's metal and it's two pieces like this. Kind of looks like I tell everybody like a, a metallic praying mantis. <laughs> so take the bottom part and you want to take each leg and just start pulling it out gently. Now these are all different manufacturers can be a little different but they all have the basic same idea and it should start pulling down until at some point it clicks into place. As a cellist you might not have to do much more to that. It will adjust for height if you want to bring it up a little bit but it's for the violins and violas that we make it nice and tall because they want to play standing up sometimes. So for this, I can keep it kind of short. The top part, it just unfolds like a fan. Now when you go to fold it up later, watch your fingers, you can pinch yourself, but it just unfolds like a fan and slides right on. And bingo, your music stand is all ready. Now the perfect thing you can do to set yourself up for success is to have a place in your house, maybe in your bedroom, maybe in the living room, if you have a music room, a corner where you can set up your chair and your music stand and your music, and it can always be there. Now, I don't want you to leave your cello out when you're not playing. When you're done playing every day, I want you to pack it back up because we need to protect it. We need to protect it from little brothers and sisters. We need to protect it from pets. We need to protect it from accidentally getting knocked over. So, um, but, the rest of it, if you can have a place where you're ready to sit down every day and play for 10 or 15 minutes, then you're well on your way to becoming a great cellist. Now, I hope this helped set you up so that literally the first day your instrument walks through the door of your house, you can start having fun with it. My name is Anna Huffmaker, and I am with Huffmaker Violins, and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to call us. We're all musicians. We want to help you make music. 
and enjoy. Enjoy starting school digitally. This is going to be a grand adventure, I promise. Thank you so much.